start, we're away. Or we'll find out. <laughs> so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here in this wonderful city, in this wonderful symposium. And first of all, a huge thank you to Andrew Flack and Matthew Hillier, who invited me to talk here at this symposium and who did this great work to organize this conference. And I really want to thank you also for supporting me in such a caring way, even with the flights and accommodations and all of those things. So really a huge thank you. Yes, I'm very happy to talk to you today about the Austrian experience of e-exams, with e-exams. And if the clicker will work properly, yes. <laughs> Um, uh, after talking about the Austrian experience, I will answer the question why we started with e-exams, why technical issues are not enough, why we also need organizational issues, and why e-exams are better than the reputation. So I'm very happy to be here in this wonderful room and I'm very happy that it's filled now with so many people who are interested in e-exams. <laughs> So there where we start from, and I'm from the Alpen Adria University at Klagenfurt, which is in Austria. This is how my university looks like, and as you can see, it's nearly at the other end of the world. <laughs> so there's where my experience is from. And Austria is quite famous for Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I think you all know him for his music. Um, so Mozart is also famous for the Mozart Kugeln, not just for his music. And I will um, answer a secret today. Mozart is also responsible for our e-exams. And the next video will show why. So. What do today's students have in common with Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart? Their handwriting is hard to read. What are today's lecturers lacking the most? Time. What are the benefits of manually correcting exams? In 2017, the Alpen Adria Universität Klagenfurt conducted over 2,400 written exams. At Austrian universities, approximately 80,000 were held. Additionally, there were also exams at schools, higher educational institutions and other training facilities. And that's just Austria. What if exams were written on computers, in a readable, well-structured manner? What if only wrong answers of semi-standardized questions needed correction? What if the correction of standardized questions were automated? Wouldn't students receive their exam results much faster? Of course, life of lecturers and students would be easier. But computer rooms at training facilities and companies are usually too small for large online exams. So, what if candidates wrote online exams with their own computers, in a secure environment, without the possibility to cheat or to consult the internet? At the Alpen Adria Universität, students write exams with their own familiar computers. If necessary, loan devices are available. Exam results are partially evaluated automatically, and in some cases, students receive their results directly after the exam. The Secure Exam Environment, or SEE, makes this possible. As a boot environment, it prohibits access to all unauthorized resources on the computer. Additionally, software which is used in class can also be used for the exam. With the support of a digital solution, we want to free up time to make teaching more human, especially as the direct contact between lecturers and students is so essential. So this was a secret about Mozart. So that's the reason why we started with e-exams, because after centuries, uh, we were so tired of reading the bad head writings of students. <laughs> so of course, our examination would be really great, but due to increasing numbers of students, it's not affordable. It's not manageable to really um, examine students in an oral way. So um, I will introduce you today, there are several reasons for online exams, but I will um, talk today about nine plus plus reasons for exams. And as I mentioned before, the bad handwriting for students is one reason. So reason number one is the readability of free text answers. But um, with paper and pencil exams, the answers for students are not only not readable, they're only, there is a lack of structure. You know, students write on the paper sheet and there's an error to the next page. And the students themselves say, I don't have any idea what I have written for the exam. And I don't know if the lecturers will understand what my answer is. And the lecturers are completely confused. So another advantage of online exam is 
Um, sorry. The structure and overview of free text answers is another huge advantage. And um, connected with those two advantages is enhanced objectivity um, compared to written and oral examination because if students have a bad handwriting, lecturers might think unconsciously, of course it's not a, a conscious um, decision, but unconsciously think, oh, such a bad handwriting, the student doesn't make an effort and so on. So it might... Um, influence the grading and we knew there are this, there is this halo effect and the grading is affected and with online examination we have much more objectivity and we also have a lot a, vari a, um, a variety of um, question types for example i will just click over it free text answers with pictures with multimedia we even can add videos um, there are short answers true false multiple choice questions and so on and so on drag and drop closure just to get an idea i don't want to um, show it in detail just to get an idea um, calculations and so on so advantage number three is a huge variety of question types and lecturers, this is our experience, make more use of various question types when testing online since the testing environment offers impulses for experimentation. So when testing with paper and pencil, most of the time they have multiple choice questions, open text answers, but when testing online they say, oh, I can have a drag and drop question. Closure is a nice idea. So we, um, our experience shows that there's a huge variety of, tests, of question types which makes the examination also int more interesting and as I will um, later tell you, there's also increasing quality. And um, the advantage of standardized question types and even semi-standardized question types is that you have um, a huge overview about the, the answers and you don't need to correct the standardized question types. So advantage number five is the semi-automatic correction of semi-standardized question types. And one of my favorite advantages, because it was the reason why we started with online exams in Klagenfurt, is we can add additional software. For example, we do such a lot of things with spreadsheets, for example, or with GeoGebra, mathematics software, but we can't use it on the paper and pencil examination. And with um, online exams, it's possible to apply software which is used for teaching and learning for exams as well. And this is really a huge, a huge advantage and really um, increases quality of testing and assessment. So, since we know that assessment is a huge influencer of learning processes, um, we know also that the way we examine students influences the way students learn, because students learn for the examination, and they learn for the kind of examination they will have at the end of the semester. So, examination is really a shaper of the quality of education. And this also brings me to advantage number seven. Well-designed e-exams foster constructive alignment with teaching and learning processes. For example, we can use the software we use for teaching and learning, even for examination. Hands-on learning, because, for example, programming. If students um, do programming in their, during their exam, examination, they really can do it in, the, um, in the, um, the way they are used to. And also deep learning. And deep learning is, I think, the aim of higher, higher education. Um, there are several more advantages. For example, what if students are able to choose the exam time freely? So our e-exams made it possible to offer students a possibility to choose their exam slot um, freely. So we have three uh, um, slot weeks uh, um, a year. So students can choose when they have their exam, 8 o'clock in the morning or in the evening. So we also support our students um, with who um, are employed or have children and so on. They have not always the time for the examination, we support them. And um, as I mentioned, um, there are various exams of various courses in the same lecture hall at the same time. And of course, the uh, question pool have to be sufficiently large enough to do this because the students won't see the same question at the same time. So advantage number eight, e-exams offer flexibility. And there are so many more advantages I can't um, list them all today because the time is limited, but for example, synchronous correction of exams with, with um, colleagues, mobile correction, exams do not get lost is also an advantage. Um, you don't need to copy exams, there's no waste of paper, cheating is more difficult, it's nearly impossible, and statistics are available much faster. And there are also advantages for students. Students get faster results for the examination, automated and individual feedback, and we made the experience that when students um, should come to the office to get feedback for the paper and pencil exams, they hardly show up. So they're afraid to come to the office and they're afraid to be blamed and so on. But with the online examination, 100% of students want to see why they, have their, why, they, why they have their mark. 
So 100% are interested in feedback, but it's just too shy to come to the face, uh, so to come to the face-to-face -face contact to the office. And there are so many more advantages. So this is the reasons why we started with e-exams. But of course, some years ago, we started in 2011, there were some obstacles. And these obstacles were two small computer labs. We had computer rooms for 15 or 18 students, so you, can't con you really can't, con can't conduct um, large online-scale um, large scale online exams. Um, the acquisition of sufficiently large amount of loan devices was not affordable for like 250 loan devices and not environmentally friendly because after some years they will be obs obs obsolescent <laughs> and we will have to buy a new one and so on. Um, and there were also a huge um, disadvantage missing security concepts. And this is the reason why we developed the secure exam environment or the SEE in English. So to give you an impression how does it look like when we conduct e-exams? This was one of our first e-examinations in 2011. As you can see, or well, you can't see, but I will show you now, all the students get different questions at the same time. So they can't cheat. This is one reason why they can't cheat, because they don't have the same answers on the screen at the same time. In 2011, we did the registration process analog, so we had paper and pencil sheets because we just, we just wanted to try. We said, okay, it would be a nice idea. If lecturers want to join us, okay, but we didn't know at this time how huge it will um, grow soon. And in the meantime, we do everything digitally, so the students come to the um, lecture hall, they register with the student's cards by scanning um, the student card, and they register for the, for the examination, and there are several levels of security concepts. So these are examinations of today. You can see the students right in the lecture halls, just to get an impression. And now I present some facts about our e-exams. So um, we use the students' own resources, um, plus loan devices if necessary. And the st students' own um, resources is, on the one hand, it's environmentally friendly. On the other hand, students are used to their own devices, so they don't need to cope with a different computer. Uh, we started in June 2011. And since then, we conducted more than 1,067.8 online examination. And the plus plus is because while I'm talking to you at home, no, not because there's 10 hours time difference, but <laughs> I think the next hours, um, there will be an increasing number of online exams because each day there are online exams. And we tested over quite approximately 60,000 um, students. And we are able at the moment to test 225 students synchronously but we're working on a solution to test even more. So I think in some weeks we'll be able to test 400, 500 students synchronously. Um, and as I mentioned before, we can use additional software, Excel, Eclipse, GeoGebra, and so on. Now some facts about um, students taking online exams by faculty. As you can see, we have four faculty at my home university, the Faculty for Management and Economics, the Faculty for Technical Sciences, Interdisciplinary Studies, and Humanities. And the numbers, um, so the, the high numbers of the four faculties um, depends on the, the size of the faculty. So management is the largest size um, to have the most um, online examinations. Humanities is the second largest um, faculty. That's the reason why the this, um, numbers are in this way. So how many um, percentage of our exams are online? Of course, we just compared written exams because you can't compare e-exams with oral examination. But um, with written exams, as you can see, the topic was 40% e-exams in Austria. I stand here. That's why the plus plus with each number. Um, we reached already 50, nearly 50%, but the semester is still in progress. So at the end of the semester, I think we will be, we have more than 50% of our examination online. Um, and this boost of e-exams is due to clear benefits for lecturers as well as for students. And to trigger this boost, I think, oh, this is a wrong, sorry. Um, my recommendation would be generate benefits and talk about these benefits. Benefits are really a trigger for motivation, for um, development and so on. Provide a trustworthy infrastructure Organize organization. This is a really important issue because technology is not enough. You need organization. E-examination lives from organization. Um, and also low um, entry level for lecturers. 
and start with early adopters. So at the beginning, I really just had the idea, okay, online exams would be great because I, I thought it was weird to have computer programming and to write down the programming code with paper and pencil and the lecturers correct the programming code and paper and pencil. I said, it's weird. So we, we should have another solution. And we just um, developed a prototype and we just asked some lecturers, which we knew they are early adopters, would you like to, to test? They said, oh yes, it's interesting. And soon, the other lecturers want to have it too. So it was a snowball effect, kind of a snowball effect. So start with the early adopters and um, reach a critical mass. So I don't have a number for you. There is literature about critical mass, the tipping point, for example, but I don't have a number. We don't can say where it was, also, um, what is the size of our critical mass. But it's really important to reach the early adopters, to reach some lecturers who are willing to try out new things, who will um, quite quickly realized there are so many benefits and they will talk about it and what was also interesting in Klagenfurt the students started to ask the lecturers oh colleague number X did the online exam it was so great can you do it please so even the students triggered this development so it was really amazing and the lecturers started to want to be part of this development because of, oh my colleague does online examination, so he doesn't need to correct so much um, exams anymore. I want to do it, so I want to have it. So we didn't need to make any advertisement. The lecturers and the students came to us and said, oh, we want to have online exams. Okay, um, also interesting numbers is the changes in grading before and after implementing the secure exam environment, which is quite interesting. We realized that um, with online testing, the marks um, it's, so it's, it's more difficult to get a very good mark. So in Austria, the five is the worst mark. Oh, the laser pointer doesn't work. The five is the worst mark, the four is the second worst mark, and first, so one is the best mark. And as you can see, the ones decrease. So it's harder to get a one for students with online examination. We, um, I can't really seriously say why, but we have some, so we have some um, ideas why this might happen. It's harder to cheat, so this might be an issue. <laughs> um, the quality of the uh, questions increases, so we try to foster lecturers even to support deeper learning, because a lot of lecturers, some years ago, they had lectures where you just clipped through PowerPoint slides, you know? 280 PowerPoint slides, what? I don't know how many, but just learning on the surface. And e-testing was one way to, um, yes, to argue that maybe this might not be the, the right way for a higher education. So by supporting them with the examination process, and by rethinking examination, we realized that they also created higher quality examinations with deeper learning. And this might be a reason why the, the ones are decreasing. But to be true, I don't know what the real reasons are. We have to find out in the future. And very interestingly, we also compared um, examination from the same lecturers before online examination and after online examination, and you can see a decrease of the of this uh, ones. So a decrease of the very good marks. So this is a very interesting effect. Okay, the technical challenges, or why is the secure exam environment secure? So what we developed was a putting environment. So we put from the students' devices, so they don't use their own um, um, system, Yes, thank you, uh, um, Andrew. So they put our system, and we developed a minimized Linux system, Knopix, and we also have Fedora in use. Um, this Knopix puts a, also, also is, has a firewall. We need this virtual box because we run the safe exam browser, and the safe exam browser needs Windows, but this will change in the future. And our system um, hinders the, the access to local hard drive, external devices, memory cards, and so on, as well as to the internet, except those resources which are free for the exam, because for uh, exam examination in law, for example, we say, okay, you can have a look at the paragraphs and so on. And what we can't do, because we can restrict the access to the internet, but we allow the access to the Moodle server, so we need the safe exam browser, which was developed in, from the ETH um, Zurich, and this browser um, makes it possible that as soon as the student starts the examination, so this, the assignment in the Moodle, because we use Moodle as a platform, everything else in Moodle will be blocked. Because in Moodle there is material online for the course, um, you can uh, have a discussion form or a chat and so on. So children, students might be able to, to cheat, but due to the safe, um, safe exam browser, it's not possible. 
And there are several additional security settings. For example, we insert the IP range of the lecture hall. So if the student sits outside the lecture hall, he or she is not able to access the examination. Um, only a specified group is allowed to open the exam. So the students have to come um, person in person to the lecture hall. They have to register with the student card. We make a face check there. And um, then they are able to open the exam. So if they don't show up, they can't open the exam. They have to get into this group to be able to open the exam. And by checking out the lecture hall, students are removed from this group. So if they leave the lecture hall, they check out with the student card again. So they with Canon again, and then they are not in this group anymore, and they have no access anymore. And only in the lecture hall, the exam is turned visible. So it's, you can't see it before or after. And there's the maximum of one attempt. So students have just one attempt for the examination. And of course, a time limit. And so it looks like when you do it in Moodle, for example, you see the IP range and the safe exam browser restriction, so you can't open the, exam, the, the test without a safe exam browser. So what are the disadvantages of e-exams? Um, on the one hand, continuous adaptation, adaption of the secure exam and the new hardware requirements is needed. For example, UEFI boot or the newest devices have no Ethernet ports anymore. So we work with adapters at the moment, but we also have solutions for the future. But um, this is a disadvantage. You always have to cope with new hardware challenges. Network has to work properly. Network and power sockets need to be installed in ex exam rooms. We already have a solution for wireless LAN, but we don't use it at the moment because we can cope with the LAN solution and LAN is much more secure because you can easily disturb a wireless LAN. So this is an issue. And technical support is necessary and dependence from energy and technology like for every technical thing. As I mentioned before, organization is really important. Organization is quite often the poor cousin of technology, um, but it's, it is often, it's quite often underestimated, but it's really essential for online testing. So we have e-tutors, which are students who are trained by our team um, to support your online examination, also, also inside the lecture hall. Um, and support e-exams, videos, tools, because my department is responsible for each kind of e-learning activity in our, at our university. And here you can see my team. Some of us is staff and the rest are students. So we are four persons in staff, but they don't have 100% employment, and the rest are students who work for us as e-tutors. And we also developed um, a back end to control our e-examination process. For example, we can choose the additional software which is a, um, should be available for one examination so you really can um, um, change the settings for each examination which software should be available. We have, of course, we have statistics and so on and we can see, so the tutors can see for which examination they're responsible and uh, where they, when and where they will work and so on. And there's a lot of organization before an e-exam. Um, so before an exam, testing of students' devices. Since we developed a boot environment, we have to change the boot order of the students' devices. So we offer information days. Students can come there and we um, change the boot order on their, on their computers and also make an entry in our database so we will know which student has a computer which works and which student has no computer will, who will need a loan device. And yes. That's it, and this is just an impression how it looks like if you change the boot order. So we should allow network boot, and we will also have to say the computer network boot is the priority boot if a network cable and booting wire network cable is available. And we also support our lecturers in advance with the creation of questions and exams. We have a checklist for the creation of high quality multiple choice questions because multiple choice questions have the reputation that they just test level, uh, just, just test knowledge on a surface level. That's not true. You can really create brilliant multiple choice questions and we support with the execution of online exams. During an exam, um, we show a video at the beginning of the exam to make clear what are the conditions and the um, circumstances. So the students will know they have to put away their mobile phones. They are not allowed to have the bag on the on the table or on the chair next to them and so on. So there are clear conditions. That's why we have a video. So nobody can say you didn't don't tell me. There are clear um, rules for everybody and that's why we have this video. And we have also a guidance through the examination, step one, step two, as you can see here, what is not allowed to have files or bags or smartphones on the desk and so on. So we really guide the students through the process just to get an impression. And during an examination, there's also there are limits in 
in technical um, issues, also technical limitations, which you can solve by organization. For example, as I mentioned before, face recognition. In Austria, we have a very um, strict data protection law. So face recognition like iris scan or fingerprint would be possible, but not allowed. And that's the reason why we have students there who sit there, who check the students. The students come there, they scan their student's card, but they do the face check. So when they scan the student card, we see their picture on the screen and we have to look, is this the right person? Sometimes difficult because they change the hair color and the style and so on, but <laughs> it's, they, we need human beings to make this check because it would be possible in a technical way, but it's not legal. Um, also support with technical issues, there might be technical problems where they need support and so on. Now, um, it might be of interest what lecturers think about e-exams. We did a survey which is really brand new because the deadline was on Tuesday, so these are really brand new results. And as you can see, 59.5% um, of our lecturers like e-exams very much, and 19% said it was on, a, on a Likert scale gave it two. So, as you can see, it's, um, they like it pretty much. What are the reasons for conducting online exams? This is clustered, that's why not the, the highest one altogether, it's clustered for, um, clustered for um, advantages. And the most important reason for conducting online exams for lecturers is saving time correcting the exam. 90% mentioned this. 69% mentioned faster exam results for students, which is also an issue, because students need the results to know, should I make visit the course again, or should they need to plan the study? And so this is also a high advantage. And the third one is better readability of the answers. And as you can see there, saving paper and saving time and so on is also important. And very interesting for us is that additional software reached only 14%. It's quite interesting for us. And we also ask our lecturers, um, for your first online examination, how much effort was it to um, to, con to do make up to, to create the online examination and how much time did it save? So and they told us for the first, the very first online examination, it was about 7.5 hours preparing the question pool. They invested about one hour preparing the exam, but they already saved for the first examination about nearly six hours correcting the exams one hour conduct of exam and about two hours administrative preparations for examination. And now after some years, as you can see, they just have to invest about half an hour for updating the question pool and the other um, areas, they're just time saving. So there's a huge um, time saving in the area of correction exams, uh, administration preparation for exams, preparing the question pool, conducting of exams. So over the time, it's really a huge saver for time of time. To answer the question why e-exams are better than the reputation, to sum up, even multiple choice questions might assess deeper knowledge if well designed. This is um, one um, prejudice which is not true. So multiple choice questions can be very good of high quality. Um, various question types and which assessment. Additional software fosters deep learning, hand-on assessment and constructive alignment. And e-exam saves time, which could be invested in more time-consuming teaching activities. To be true, we have some lecturers who invest this time in other teaching activities, others do not. <laughs> they invest it in research and publications and so on, but it's up to them. And, but if lecturers use this um, time, um, it's some really good um, things can happen. I just will show you one example. For example, we, in the informatics uh, studies, the students have to learn how to program. And we also have cultural studies where students learn something about game design. And after testing those students um, online, for example, that they have basic programming skills and so on, um, we conducted a game jam. So students work together from the technical department and from the cultural department to develop computer games. So they have to program it, they have to create the, the concept of the game and so on. And this is just one example where lecturers invested the time they saved from the e-exams in teaching assignments and assess assignments in general, which are an alternative way. So, which questions are left? <laughs> yeah, you'll need a few mics, 
Hi, um, I'm Catherine Hill from La Trobe University. I'm just wondering, you mentioned an increase in the use of e-exams. Is that <laughs> instead of pen and paper exams or is that it replacing other types of assessment? It's uh, mainly a reduce of paper and pencil examination, mainly. Okay, good, thank you. Kia ora, Jo Hopkirk from Massey University, New Zealand. Um, all your exams are set on campus? You don't have any yes, distance? Yes, they are on campus. Um, it's a security reason because you, it would be possible, technically it would be possible to have the examination at home. You can have, um, Iris can, you can record the audio signals in the, in the room and so on. You can have several cameras, um, 360 degrees cameras and so on. It's possible, but it's not allowed in Austria. So. And it's a huge, it's, it's really, it would be a huge effort. It is possible, but we decided to, to conduct the exams in our house, so the students come to university and write the exam. So they have much flexibility with it, not with each exam, there are a lot of exams which take place to a certain time, there are just some exams which um, are held in this uh, slot, in the slotted week, but we decided the students have to come to the campus. Hi, this is Ali Rana from Deakin University. So in terms of wireless network, so uh, you have mentioned that there were limitations observed. So are there any plans to sort of, you know, incorporate wireless connectivity or uh, would it be sort of limited to, to physical networks? Um, the question was, which ideas we have to make it secure or? Yes. For wireless, or f so to support this uh, sort of uh, C environment on mm -hmm. a wireless network, so mm -hmm. are there any future work planned to sort of incorporate that? Yes, we have already a solution to do it with wireless uh, network. And there are issues you can't control wireless networks. So there are little jammers, they have the size of a smartphone. You can have it in your back and you can disturb a wireless, uh, wireless network. And we thought about it, how can we cope with this? So, because technically it's not possible. We, okay, we can scan um, the person who has this jammer, but for example, a person who would like to cheat at the registration process, he or she can just throw it in the back of a colleague, so the colleague would be blamed for it. So it's, a, it's really an issue because we can um, identify which person has the chamber, but we can't say if this person is the person who is to blame. And this is a, a problem. And we, the only idea we have, because you can't control wireless LAN, there's no technical solution, I don't know any, <laughs> to control the wireless LAN, um, is to, also to make it secure in an organizational form. Do we really have strict laws that say, so, okay, if you do it, it's illegal. If you disturb a wireless LAN, it's illegal with serious consequences. And we also thought about um, little devices where the students get access to only a wireless LAN which we control. Of course, this wireless LAN could also be disturbed, but it's at least a bit of control on our side. Um, I'd be interested to hear a little bit more about uh, the testing that mm -hmm. you do with the students and how you go with that, how you go with getting them all in to test and then what happens if a student turns up and their laptop doesn't work and the loaners and things like that. It doesn't happen does the, does they can't um, take part in the exam because if their laptop doesn't work we have in the first row we have some um, service laptops so we always will so it's about 10% of the numbers which are expected to take part in the exam there are prepared um, loan devices. So if one student device will fail or break during the exam, the students just will switch to another laptop, which is owned by us, and there's no problem, because Moodle makes it possible that if the connection is gone, you can log in again. And we have the possibility to give a second attempt, because I mentioned each student has just one attempt, but in case of a technical failure, we can say this single student will get a second attempt. And the first question were about how we examine the students. At the moment, each student has to come to our information desk once in a lifetime of the computer or of the student. <laughs> so it's just once, even except the student buys a new computer. But for each new computer, the student has to appear once 
um, we will make sure that this, the computer works. Some computers doesn't work. So the latest computers, the brand newest computers doesn't work because we have to find new solutions for those devices. As I mentioned before, the newest devices don't have Ethernet slots, um, um, slots anymore. So if the adapter doesn't work, you have to find um, a driver for the adapters and so on. So it could be if the student have a laptop which is two weeks old, it won't work with our solution, so we have to find a new solution for those computers and then it will work again. But as I mentioned also, we have a database where we um, collect the data from each student, the number of the identity number of the student and the name and the kind of the computer. So we get also statistics about which computers work well and which not and where we go to get information um, for which computers we have to find solutions. It's also important information for us. So we can, get, so since eight years, no single um, assessment failed, not for one single student. So each student was able to write his or her examination. Exam, sorry. I was wondering if you've uh, looked at capturing handwritten numerical and graphical responses mm -hmm. using plugins. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Uh, using a Moodle plugin. You're using Moodle as your platform, aren't yes. you? Yes. Yeah, for instance, have you used wires? No, not. We use, for example, H5B as a plugin, but this the data plugin we don't use, no. So, so you're using that to capture handwritten numerical and graphical responses? No, they, they just type their answers. So you're not do, using touch screens or anything at all? Not at the moment, no. Okay, I'll look at that. Um, so I just had a, a question about the, um, I can see how the, the time saving uh, from the marking would more mm -hmm. than outweigh the question setting, but you did mention that you had, um, you had to have question pools that were sufficiently large and you mm -hmm. were introducing, um, so essentially students would be taking potentially lots of different questions and across multiple different mm -hmm. uh, exam slots. Um, so I guess uh, two questions was really, uh, what's the scale at which you have to, increase the size of the pool um, and are there any questions or problems with reliability if you've got students sitting essentially different exams? Um, yes, so this sufficiently large enough question pool is just important for the slotted exams because um, we conduct these exams with various students and various examinations. So it could be that a student takes a maths examination uh, next to a student with language examination and so on. It's not that huge a problem but you don't know. We, we try to sit um, the students not together with the same examination, but so we don't know it. But just for this question, uh, for these slotted exams, the la question pool has to be large enough because if a student will take the exam Monday in the morning and the next one on Tuesday at lunch at noon, we uh, have to ensure that the questions are not given to the other student. So the really high, uh, so if, um, this, um, this really large question pool is just necessary for those examinations for the slotted weeks. For the norm normal examination, there's a shuffling of questions and for multiple choice questions, a shuffling of test items. So the, the chance that the students who sit together will have the same question at the same time on the screen is quite low. And even if it's, it would be a multiple choice questions, the items are not in the same order. This is um, to answer the first question. And the second one um, was about Sorry, just um, if, if, you're, if you're drawing from a large pool in order that... Uh, so my understanding uh, hobby, is it's not, yes. not just that they're yes. in a different order, but they're potentially answering uh, a selection of different questions as mm -hmm. well, and whether or not they were... Yes, if they're liable, yes. There is a possibility to, to t make tests. You can test if questions are um, on the same level or not. And Moodle also offers um, categories of question types. So we recommend lecturers to have different categories, easy questions, difficult questions and questions in the middle. So you can have categories for each, for each um, test and you can say, okay, give each student one question from the easy question, so one easy question, two difficult questions, three medium questions, um, five questions from this topic, seven questions from this topic and so on. And there are um, methods to um, guarantee that the tests are um, on the same level, but it's the same question for paper and pencil test. If you have different um, paper and pencil um, sheets, how will you compare that they are on the same level? But there are methods to do it. Some students have access 
So do students get feedback on their automated questions? So for example, especially with MCQs, do students get feedback? And if they get feedback, what's stopping them from sharing those questions with other students? So mm -hmm. we have this huge phenomenon where students keep posting stuff on Facebook sites. And yes, we have this phenomenon too. <laughs> we share this, this ex experience. Um, so if students get lectures, depends on, uh, if students get uh, feedback, depends on the lectures. We recommend lectures because in Moodle you have the possibility to give um, automated feedback. For each question you can give a general feedback and each student will get this feedback. Feed feedback. And you also can give individual feedback. So a lecturer can say for each student, ah, for this question, I will give this and this feedback. So this is possible and we recommend it. Some lecturers use it, some lecturers don't use it. Um, so, um, and the question was how we can solve the problem that the students will give the feedback to others. So we can um, define the time range during which this, the exam is open and visible. So for example, if an um, exam lasts for one hour, you can have 60 hours to write the exam. Um, the, the time when the exam is open is during the students are in the lecture hall, for example, for one and a half hours. So after they submit their examination, you can make the settings that they will see the feedback inside the lecture hall. They submit the test, then they receive the feedback, will see, ah, this, this here was wrong, here was right, and so on, and why they might be wrong, uh, might have been um, right, and then they leave the lecture hall and don't see the feedback anymore. But we also have lectures who allow that the feedback is visible all the time. Because they say, I have, my question pool is so large, the chance that they will um, get the next question, the same question with the next exam is, is so low. Or some lecturers also say, even if they have the feedback, they won't be better at the next exam. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so it depends on the lecturers. It's the free choice of the lecturers. Hi, it's uh, Claire from University of Tasmania. I was interested in your um, e-tutor team and the mm -hmm. particular skill set that they have and, and mm -hmm. how, they, uh, how they operate and also any impact on supervision with, with their particular skills or the numbers of supervisors that are needed, any changes there? Mm -hmm. um, so our students are trained by us. So if we get, so we always acquire students. So if we get new students, they get the training and mainly they just um, visit online exams and just help because there are different levels of support. Some are just bringing the loan devices there and giving the cables to the students so it is the first contact with online examination. And over the time they experience what are the requirements to conduct online exams and after a while they get leads. So if we think okay they have enough experience now they get leads so in the lead of a so e-tutor who has a lead is responsible for checking the questions with the lecturer in advance, making sure that the Moodle settings are proper because you have to insert the IP range and so on. So they are responsible for those things. They also say, um, as we have, as you um, have, may, might have seen, we have a back end where they can insert if they're available because we have all the time online exams. So the students insert just the time when they're available, and we um, have approximately. So we, we um, have guesses or um, um, we approximate the number of students who will take part in the exam because of the previous years, but because we know some examinations are so difficult, just 50% of the students who was at the course will take part. So we have some experience with those um, numbers. And then we say, okay, 400 students are in the course, 250 might show up. And then we say, okay, for 250 students, we need so and so many e-tutors. So the students say um, who is available, and the lead decides who will, um, will give, who will make the support. And the lead is also responsible for choosing the right additional software. And we even have the possibility to switch off and on the electricity for the lecture halls. So we can say if there is in lecture hall one an online exam and the lecture hall B not, we can switch off the electricity there. So nobody can have access to lecture hall B, for example, it's possible for some cases we need it. And um, they also give a speech at the beginning because, as I mentioned, we show this video with the general information, but there might be specific information for a specific exam, like how many questions, which types of questions, so the students get information, you will have 20 questions to answer, you have 60 minutes of time, it will be a mixture of multiple choice and open text questions and so on. So this specific information is given by the e-tutors and Yes, that's it.
Gabrielle, thanks a lot. That was really excellent. You're obviously leaders in this area. Do you have any intentions for scaling it beyond your institution? And because you've obviously invested tens of thousands of hours and other universities um, would probably need to duplicate that sort of effort to get as far as you have. That's very interesting, this question, because when I wanted to start this online examination, I had to look on the market and I didn't find any solution. I thought, it's weird. There must be a solution. And we really looked, I don't know, for, for half a year or so. I said, okay, we'll make an own, an own prototype just to cope with our challenges and so on. And I didn't expect to get it, that it will be so huge in such a short time. So it grew and grew and grew. And um, we further developed this prototype and so on. And soon we get requests from other universities, from companies that would like to have our system. And I always thought, why? We are Klagenfurt, you know, we are just a small university. And I always, always waited for a company or a big university to make a better system. But until now, I'm not sure if there is one. I didn't find it. And we got really a lot of requests from universities, from companies, from huge companies. And we said, we don't make business out of it. You can have it for free. And we stored the, this, our environment on a Raspberry Pi, you know, these little things. And we sent it to this to the guys who were interested in our solution said, okay, you can have it for free, use it. And they said, oh, thanks, but we need support. I said, I don't have time for support. <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, so at the moment we're thinking about making business out of it. So next year we'll really think about it because we have so many requests and so many people seem to be interested in solutions. So, and they need support and we don't have the time for support at the moment. So we're thinking about it, yes. Hello. Um, I was just wondering, does, do your exams currently cater for um, students with special needs? Yes, yes. Um, we have different solutions for students with special needs. They don't write it with our environment, but in the same manner. So if a student has special needs, um, we realised it's never the same needs. There's no general special need configuration. It's not possible because some student uses a special braille, um, braille um, keyboard and a specific screen reader and so on. So if those students have a special need, if they register for examination, they can set the flag, I have specific, uh, special needs, and they will contact us, so we will contact them, um, and we will find a way for them. So they write an environment which is really used for them, and we protect it. So. Um, there is an issue to guarantee that the sec secure exam browser will allow this um, additional software because the secure exam browser is made to block additional things. Um, but we always have an, a solution for those students that they write with their um, common environment. And it's much easier for them. It's also an advantage, one of, the, one of the many not mentioned advantages of online examination, it's easier for students with, with special needs because on paper and pencil they're really limited. With online examination, they can um, um, enlarge the screen and the text and so on, so it's much easier for them. Thank you very much. And at the last, if I have time, just to show you, there's a gag, you know, because I'm from Austria. If I travel around the world and the people ask me, where are you from? I say, Austria. I say, oh, Austria, kangaroos. They say, no, Austria. So, and the German name for the SEE is Sichere Prüfungsumgebung, SPU. So, Austria, no kangaroos, but boo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, that, Gabby, thank you very much. That was an excellent start to the day, and I think it's always very impressive when you see an institution that's actually been able to implement something on a wide, uh, wide scale. Uh, so, thank you very much uh, for that. We really appreciate that. One more round of applause for Gabby. Please. So now uh, session two, which